Hello, it's Gabby here for you. Before we jump onto this week's podcast, I just want to let you know about two ways that you can work with me. First of all, I do one-to-one coaching and I do that via Zoom so we can jump on a Zoom call at a time to suit you. The second thing I've got for you is an online coaching course that's 12 modules that you can download straight away now. There will be a link somewhere around these podcast notes. And this is the course that I've designed and it's got everything in it that I wish I'd have known when I finished cancer treatment and I was lost. So you can download that course now and you can start working towards making this your happiest and healthiest year ever. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Take care. Bye bye. Hello there, it's Gabby here from Confidence After Cancer and I hope this finds you well. This week's topic is one that people struggle with and I have to say particularly women and that is asking for help. Something we can all struggle with sometimes in our lives but sometimes as well if you've been suffering with low confidence or low self-esteem it can be really really difficult for asking for help or asking for what you need. So I'm going to talk about this that this week and I'm going to give you a structure that I use in my coaching work that I do with people and it's a structure that's got six very simple steps to it that might help you if you're struggling to um, reach out to somebody and ask for what you want or ask for some help with something. So first of all just want to talk about the energy that you bring into this conversation that you might need to have with somebody. You know we all have an energy around us all the time and if you like most people you slip in and out of maybe a different role. Sometimes you're a mother, sometimes you're a friend, sometimes you're a wife, sometimes you're an employee, sometimes you're a boss, maybe sometimes you're a manager. We all play different roles and we all bring different energy to that. So uh, it's quite hard sometimes to stay in the energy that feels true to you. If you're feeling low in confidence or your self-esteem has taken a bit of a knock, And so I'm going to talk to you this week and suggest to you that you really want to stay in your feminine but powerful energy when you're having these conversations about asking for what you want, when you're asking for help. Okay, don't, as we can do sometimes, it gets easy sometimes to confuse being assertive with being aggressive. And I've fallen foul of this in the past as well, where I've assumed that people should know what I want. I've assumed that people around me would ask, know that I'm asking for help or even if I hadn't verbalised that I needed some help, I think, well, they should know that I'm struggling. But sometimes people don't. So it's very easy to slip from being assertive into being aggressive without even realising sometimes. And that's not what we want, is it? We want to hold our power. We want to have a, a grown-up conversation. We want to be able to ask for help without slipping into being aggressive or the other thing that can quite often happen with women is particularly when you're a mother as well particularly or you're a wife and you're used to looking after other people and then building up resentments because people aren't looking after you and it's quite easy to slip into the martyr sometimes of oh well I'll just keep on doing everything and nobody's going to help me and I don't there's no point asking because nobody nobody's coming to see me And that's not where we want to be. That is really, you've given your power away if you're slipping into the martyr uh, role as well. And so I'm just going to suggest to you to think about the the role that you want to play. Think about the energy that you bring into these conversations. Okay, so I've got a a six step structure, as I said, which sounds quite laborious, really, but they're very simple steps. And I hope they help you because I use these with people when I'm coaching them to have difficult conversations. So you might want to use this, and I'm trying to think of an example because I'm going to speak very generally. Think about this if, say, if you wanted to have a conversation with your boss about a pay rise, or it could be if you were thinking about the person that you live with and you want some more help with the housework. Maybe things are not equally balanced and you don't want to slip into being aggressive about it and you don't, you're don't. maybe tired of being a martyr and doing everything. So you want to have a grown-up conversation where you're in your power, stating what you want and asking for help. How would that be? Okay, so before we start, I just want you to remember that you deserve to have your needs met. And quite often, again, when we get lacking in confidence or our self-esteem is taking a bit of a knock, it's quite easy to get into the habit or the way of thinking that, well, it's just me and I don't really deserve any better. You do deserve better, my love. And hopefully that's why you listen to this podcast, because you want to make a change. You want to be recognize for the person that you are you're not above anybody else but you're not below anybody else either so I'm hoping that you can recognize that you are worthy 
and that you can take your power back by simple steps and maybe practicing some of the things I share in my podcast. But it is your responsibility to make sure that your needs are met. And as I say, I've fallen into this trap before by thinking, well, my husband will know by now that I'm really fed up. And sometimes it can get into the habit of being quite passive aggressive about, yes, I'll just do the housework again without any help. That's not, that doesn't help him, you know. My husband will help me if I say what I want. But he's not a mind reader. He can't anticipate my needs. So it's your responsibility to state what you need without being aggressive, without being nasty. You can say it in a nice way. And sometimes less is more because the person that you're talking to might be expecting this conversation. Well, maybe not. But think about your own power that you're bringing to this, your own energy that you're bringing to this. Don't go in aggressive. Go in with the expectation that you're going to state your needs and you're going to get what you want, but also the other person's going to feel good about it as well. You're not there to take them down or to override their um, their feelings at all. That's not about that. This is not about that. So the steps are, first of all, if it's a big conversation that you want to have, maybe the pay rise thing, is tell the person why you want to talk and make an appointment. So it's a planned time. It's not rushed. It's not done in the heat of the moment. And it's not done, hopefully, when you're feeling really emotional about things. And you can be quite rational and state what you want. So once you're at the appointed time and you're having this conversation, start with how you feel, how you feel, don't use you made me feel because nobody can make you feel anything. Take responsibility and talk about how you feel and what you need. What is it that you want to get? So share what the third step is to share. Share what that would give you if you were to get that help or you to get that pay rise or to get whatever it is that you want. What would that give to you? What would it provide you with? So say that quite calmly, and quite clearly. And then if you can, share what's in it for them. So if it is your husband, you're constantly having little tittle arguments about and, and bitching with each other. Well, actually, you know, I'm fed up of arguing about trivia. I'm, I'm fed up with bickering. Let's just make an agreement and let's just stick to it and let's just enjoy our time together. How would that be? I'm sure most people would say yes to that. And then step five. Ask the other person as well how they feel about it. So don't just be on transmit saying this is what I want. This is what needs to change. These are all the things. Make it a two-way conversation if you can. So ask them, is there anything that you need to be able to give me what I need? So it may be, you know, again, the pay rise thing. It may be your boss needs certain things from you before he can agree to, or he or she can agree to a pay rise. The same with, the, you know, any conversation that you're having. It should be a two-way conversation. You're not just on transmit dictating what you want. A bit of give and take is sometimes good. And then step six is to collaborate on a way forward. Come to an agreement that suits both of you. Hopefully, you're not just going to um, be bombastic and override the other person's feelings. You're going to take account of what they say as well, what their needs are. Maybe they, they're completely unaware of the fact that you're feeling like this. And it's good to just share that and just have a conversation and air it once and for all. Don't let any resentments carry forward because that is, you know, it's not a good thing. And I've, I've fallen foul of that in the past as well by not stating what I wanted and letting resentments fester for far too long. And little things sometimes can build up then into big things. And you start off arguing about one thing and then before you know it, you, you're on a, a slippery slope of, of negativity. That's not what we want. And I don't want to leave you with that either. I'm hoping those six steps make absolute sense to you. As I say, this is something that I work a lot with my coaching clients on. Being able to ask for what they want, being able to ask for what they need is a thing that a lot of people struggle with. And as I say, if your confidence is low and your self-esteem is low and you're not feeling worthy, this can be really difficult sometimes. So I'm hoping these six steps will help you and if you need any more help with anything you know where I am reach out to me ping me a message uh, get in touch I'd love to hear from you as always thank you so much for listening it means the absolute world that you've listened to me on my podcast have a brilliant week stay safe and stay sane take care my lovely bye-bye